Welcome to Virtualize Everything. Today we're going to take a look at how to install Windows 11 inside a Proxmox VM on a Proxmox system. So the first thing you're going to need to do is get your hands on a Windows 11 VM. I already have one here, but a little bit of Google searching and you should be able to find one. Sorry we won't be taking you through that process today. Once you have it downloaded, and uploaded to your Proxmox system, either using the upload feature or the download from URL feature, you're at the point of where we're starting. So the first thing we're going to need to do at this point is click Create VM. At this point, we'll give it a name. And I'm just calling mine Windows 11. I'm going to enter a tag. You don't have to do so. If you choose to enter a tag, you can do so at this point by clicking Advanced. Then you can click Next, and under OS, you're going to select your Windows 11 ISO installer. For guest operating system, let's go ahead and select Windows, and it's Windows 11. We'll add an additional drive, and at local, we're also going to download the vert io slash Windows driver disk. This can be found on the Proxmox website. We can press Next, and it's already pre-configured with a lot of the options that we're going to need to use for Windows. I like to check QEMU guest agent. EFI disk is already checked. We will have to click this drop down and select our drive to store our EFI disk in. In our case, it's going to be local LVM. Yours might be something different like local ZFS or something like that. We also need to check add TPM. Our configuration does that automatically for us, but we'll need to add that TPM storage. And again, we're going to be selecting local LVM. The same thing holds true for the naming conventions there. Your pre-enroll keys will remain checked, and you'll press Next. Future VE here. So here at the Disk tab, we're actually going to want to select Bus Devices, drop down, and select Saturn. And then we can go ahead and increase our disk size. There may be no need to increase the disk size, but personally, I like to have a little bit more storage than 32 gigs. So I'm going to be giving my VM 100 gigs. If you have an SSD, you want to go ahead and check discard. I'm actually using a platter drive, so I won't need to check discard because discard is a write protection or massive write protection for SSDs. At this point, we'll hit next. I'm going to go ahead and give mine four cores. And this is kind of a personal option, but I do feel that it helps VMs perform a little better. I'm going to click the drop down. Scroll all the way down to host and check it. Then I'm going to press next. For RAM, it wants at least four gigs. I'm going to give it 8,000 megs. It's a little less than eight gigs, but I don't feel like figuring out the exact number for eight gigs. If you would like to do that, you can multiply eight by 1,024, and that'll give you the exact number. I'm going to hit next. Future VE here at the networking tab, and we're going to want to make a few alterations here. Now, normally I'll configure the bridge because I have a few other bridges here, and that is entirely up to you which bridge you want to use. But what you want to do is make sure you adjust our NIC model type from VertIO to something other. I usually choose the Realtac RTL. 8139, and it seems to have perfect compatibility with Windows. The VertIO drivers won't be installed yet during the Windows installation process, and you're going to be unable to connect to the internet, which won't allow you to finish the setup process of Windows 11. You can hit Next. Now it's going to ask you to go ahead and overlook your settings and confirm if they're correct. I'm going to hit finish because they are, and it'll start building my VM. You can see that it appeared here, and now that the name has appeared, we're ready to start it. So we'll press start, and we'll click on console. Your Windows system should boot up to a screen that looks like this, and this means we're ready to start installing Windows. This information is correct for me, so I'm going to press next. Now I'm going to hit install. 
and I don't have a CD key to use today, so I'm going to click I don't have a product key. If you had one, please enter it at this point. And now it's going to ask us to select which version of Windows we want. You can select whichever one you want. It should be fairly standard to this tutorial, no matter whichever one your CD key is meant for, if you have one, or whichever one you choose. Now note, by not having a CD key, you're going to have some limitations provided to you from Microsoft, and please go ahead and read Microsoft's documentation on what those might be. I'm selecting Windows 11 Pro, and I'm going to press Next, and I'm going to look through the Eula really fast. You may want to take some time to understand it, and I'm going to press Accept, and then press Next. Then I'm going to choose Custom Install Windows Only Advanced. So now that you can see, we actually have a drive that appears usable. We're going to go ahead, select that drive, click New, and hit Apply, and OK, so we can use the entire drive. Windows is going to create three other partitions that it needs for itself, with the primary drive just being under the assigned value of 100 gigs. We'll press Next at this point, and Windows will begin installing. I will be back with you at the next prompt so we can look at the next steps of installing Windows. So Windows 11 is finished doing its thing, and we're back with you at the next prompt, where it's going to ask you which country you live in. U.S. is correct, so I'm hitting yes. We'll use U.S. We're going to skip. So Windows spent a good amount of time doing some continued configuration and updating, and now it's asking us for the name of our device. I'm just going to call mine VE Test today. You can call yours whatever you want. And I'm going to hit Next. Now Windows is going to ask you what your intended use is. We'll select Personal and press Next. If you enter some bogus sedent, if you enter some bogus credentials, it'll tell you something went wrong, and you can go ahead and enter a username. If you wished to sign in, you would have done this at the step before. It's going to ask you to answer three security questions, and it's going to ask you to fill out your privacy settings. You can set these as you wish. I will be turning them all to no for myself, and then I'll press accept and it's going to go ahead and check for updates again. And now that we've completed all of that, we have Windows up and running in a Proxmox VM. There's one more step I'd like to take before we go ahead and conclude this video. I'd like to head over to File Explorer, and then pull this bar down where you see two CD drives. The lower CD drive labeled E is the installation media that we use to install Windows 11. The upper drive labeled D is going to be the Vert IO Windows drivers. Let's go ahead and click on that. We can scroll down and we should see the Vert IO Windows GT X64 drivers. We can go ahead and double click on them and we should be able to hit next, accept, next, next, and install. We'll click yes. This will install the system drivers so it can correctly communicate with our Proxmox system. We'll press finish. And we're also going to go ahead and install guest tools by double clicking on it, accepting, install, yes, and close. Now we can close this out. Go back to File Explorer. This time we'll go to this PC. We're going to right click, go to properties. We're going to click on search. We'll search for device manager, which you'll find right here. We'll open it. And we should be able to look through and see that everything has the correct drivers installed. So at this point, I'll go ahead and shut this system down and restart it. All right, so at this point with Windows restarted, we can go ahead and move our VM window out of our way. And here in the Proxmox window under the system summary, you'll see that you no longer have a guest tools or QEMU guest agent not installed. You actually get an IP address as well as a more tab, which is supposed to give you more information 
but I have found really doesn't. This means that we've successfully installed QEMU guest agent and we're ready to start using our Windows VM. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial about how to install and set up Windows 11 inside a Proxmox VM. As always, have a good night and consider liking, sharing, and subscribing.